Have you been struggling to make stylized trees? Perhaps it's just the process of building them from the ground up, maybe through modeling, or it's just the shaders itself. Can't really get it to look right for the leaves and maybe for the tree bark and so on. Well, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and talk about all that more in depth. And we're gonna have a look at how you can make some stylized trees just like the ones in front of you. Now, the trees in front of you, they're all the same tree. It's just been duplicated and just moved around to make multiple other types of trees, I guess you can say. Now, this is just for a visual presentation, but if I were working on a video game, then I would have to adjust these trees because it won't look right if you're seeing it from the bottom. Without wasting any more time, we'll jump right in. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and leave some icons possibly at the top and just give you an overview of the programs that we will be using in this tutorial that way you know and you are prepared and then we can go ahead and jump in and get started so without wasting any more time let's start making some stylized trees just wanted to make mention of something before we start the tutorial i forgot to sort of include this in the beginning but these uh, trees are not at the end. What I mean by that is I only have the one in the center and I believe I make the one on the left side as well. But they don't look as they do here. So I am going to modify the end of this video a little bit. So if it does seem a little bit off or huge cut, it's because I had to uh, re-record this portion to talk about how I made the trees look a lot more better and blooming up like they do now but yeah just wanted to make mention of that so we're not giving any sort of false results here but anyways let's get back to the tutorial and get started we're gonna go ahead and start by opening up tree it if you don't have it you can search it up on your preferred web browser it's gonna look like this if you search up tree it it's literally going to be the first one by evolve software here you can see what it can do and some other questions and things you want to just get the exe or the zip i have the exe it's just a little easier and once you do that you want to launch the program and then we're going to jump into making the tree now so we want to go under the trunk section here and under the trunk section we're going to go where it says trunk scale the trunk length we're gonna go ahead and bring that down to about 60 I think is a good size and what we're gonna need now is a trunk texture just so that we have something visually I'm gonna just show you I wanted to keep the tutorial um, just free software but I'm gonna show you how you can make one real quick in substance designer feel free to use whatever program you want uh, you just need something you can even like in Unreal Engine just use a basic uh, shader color and that should be fine but I'm gonna show you real quick how to do that in substance designer so we can get it saved out and then we can load it here so let's jump to that real quick alright so we're in substance designer what we're gonna go ahead and do is go to file new package substance graph we're gonna go ahead and just name this uh, tree bark material uh, tutorial put okay we'll just leave it at whatever settings the 2048 by 2048 because we don't want this to lag with 4k and we don't really need our tree bark texture to be that much so um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change the shape here to cylinder this is just gonna help us to see our texture visually since we're making a tree trunk texture and what we're going to do is under generators noises here, we're going to find grunge map 005 right here. You can also uh, hit space here and then search grunge. And then here are all of them. Here it is 005. You're going to add it in. I'm going to uh, drag this out at a levels node. And then we're just going to adjust some things here just to make it not too detailed. So as you can see, we're just going to cut out some of that detail a little bit. Then I'm going to click and drag, and then I want to add a gradient map and plug that into there. I'm going to delete that. Now, I already did this ahead of time, but 
um, what you're gonna do is click and drag the roughness here and make it full roughness or else we're gonna have a shiny looking material then we're gonna go back to the gradient map here we're gonna double click here once we add in these little points and then we're gonna make sure we have this selected we're gonna change it to something that is a tree bar color I think that's fairly good then we'll go to the other end and make it a bit more of a darker red and I think that might be okay now you can add other colors in between if you want to um, as you can see this will help make the texture a little bit more uh, varied versus what we had before so now we have something like this. You can mess around with the colors all you want. Just going to leave it like that. We're going to plug this into the normal and we're going to set the intensity to four. So we have some normal detail. Now you don't have to do this. You can if you want to. You can drag this out if you type in HBA and then it's going to have the ambient occlusion node. This is going to add like fake shadows and all that stuff. So if I click and drag this to the ambient occlusion here, you can see what it does now this might be a little too intensive so I'm not sure if I'm gonna have it but you can lower it and have just a little bit if you want your texture to pop or just be more painterly so you can do whatever you want I'm just gonna leave it like that and then now the other issue is that in Unreal Engine it can only read 8 bitmap uh, images or pngs so what we're gonna have to do not pngs but any image format it just has to be 8-bit and as you can see here we have 16 and that's not gonna work that's why when you bring your textures in unreal engine they appear lighter or off it's because they're not 8-bit textures so in order to change that we just got to go to the node before it and then under output format you're gonna click on here do absolute and then it's already on eight bits per channel. There we go, it just changed from 16 to eight. Now we're gonna do it for the rest here. I'm gonna click on this, absolute, it's already on there. And the last one is this one. We're gonna click on here, absolute, and it's already on there. So now everything should be um, eight bits. Now this one's a little bit different. Sometimes it might not do it, like right here so what you can do is just select this middle connection here and uh, what I'm gonna do is just add a we'll try it with the levels node and we don't have to do too much here as you can see it's the same thing we're not we're not touching anything and then on this one we're just gonna do the same absolute 8 bits per channel now it changes so it for whatever reason it can't do it here because this is uh, 16 bit but then we can convert it put it by putting another node here and now everything should be good and that's if you want ambient occlusion if not you're not gonna have to worry so after that you want to just save everything save your project out I'm not gonna save this because it's just a uh, basic I don't really need it and then you can right click here and do export outputs as bitmaps you're gonna select where you want to save it make sure it's PNG make sure all these are selected you're, you're only really gonna need the base color the normal and maybe the ambient occlusion and then you can export the outputs to wherever you're saving it and then you should have your tree texture uh, tree bark texture and then we can load it into tree it so let's jump back to tree it now all right so we're here back in tree it we're gonna go ahead and load our texture so you're gonna load it from wherever you saved it at and we're just going to be under base hit low texture on the first one I'm gonna go to uh, the texture that I have so I'm just gonna go look for it here I have to go to one of my older projects and here's my texture I'm just gonna have the diffuse you can add the normal if you want to but I'm just gonna have the diffuse it's just enough to give me an idea and it's just for visual so once we have that set up now we can start working on the uh, tree so 
we are gonna go down a little bit what i want to do is change i want to make this tree a little bit more um a little bit more fatter because it just too skinny right now so we're gonna see where that option is so this is gonna change the bottom there a little bit we could probably add a bit of that here's the trunk radius so that's gonna make our tree a little bit bigger so yeah we want to mess around with that probably do maybe 135 and if we need to modify it later we can just do it in blender but I think that's good for now and uh, we can mess around with some of these other settings here we'll just leave that I think that that is okay and we can add a little bit of distortion to our trunk so it's not just a full cylinder and I think that's pretty good down here we can add a little bit of crinkliness to our tree and I think that's gonna be good because now as you can see it's not just a straight shape that goes up it has a bit of waviness to it and I think that that is pretty good you can mess around with some other settings I think I'm just gonna leave it like that now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure that we have uh, we can expand this out a little bit as well under the trunk flare and here you can change the uh, sides I'm just gonna leave it and we can kind of make roots in a way with this later I'll probably show you a technique on how you can make roots by just copying the branches but it's easier to do it in blender versus here so uh, you can just copy the branches and just put them on the bottom there but I think we'll stick with this for now and then we'll jump to starting to add the branches all right so for the branches we are going to increase the count here so we can start adding some in I'm not sure how much we'll have but we're gonna go for a little bit more here because the more branches and branchlets we have the more leaves we can have if we're trying to make a more fluffier kind of tree versus something like a birch tree or trees that don't have necessarily a lot of leaves on them and maybe that's something you might want to go for that's you're gonna be messing with the branches section a lot if you want to do that type of tree but we're we might go for a little bit more of a fluffier tree also keep in mind I'm leaving stuff at default usually at the top section here of uh, each of these categories you can mess around with poly count stuff down here you can see the total poly count and you can also see the poly count that's being taken up by the different areas so later we'll have leaves and so on so you if you're trying to budget you might want to check that out but other than that we're just going to keep it as we have it here so we added a few branches now we're going to um, maybe lower this a little bit so we can lower that poly count a bit more maybe the segments a little bit as well and uh, you can mess with this also to reduce it now we're gonna add some branchlets and that's gonna be part of the branches as you can see here that is where the leaves are mainly going to spawn so we're just gonna add a few in here and our poly count is jumping a little high so we'll maybe lower it a bit and we'll mess around with it we can always come back and modify the settings that's what's good about this type of uh, software then we're gonna go down to branch scale we're gonna mess with the branch uh, length here and obviously we want to make our branches a little bit smaller we don't want our tree to be like super extended out I think that might be good we can extend it a little bit more out not too much maybe something like that and um, length curvature yeah we'll just leave that and then we have branch radius and all that if you want to make your branches a little bit bigger at the end which I highly recommend doing because uh, some of these branches sometimes they feel like they're just 
little lines versus actually having any thickness so might want to mess around with that stuff a bit and then we can go and mess around with some of this stuff here just gonna change some things so feel free to mess around with the settings you don't have, at this point for the branches you can just go through here and do whatever it is that you want I'm just trying to create something that I think is kind of cool and unique here we can add some crinkliness to the branches which I think is gonna help make it more realistic so this is without it it's just straight right and the trees that I used in my uh, environment project for the sacred meadows they had this which if I wanted to I could go back and modify the branches because I think having something like this makes it a little bit more realistic the branches shouldn't be fully straight they have little distortions and things to them that make them imperfect so I'll just do that a bit and if we wanted to this looks kind of like a spooky kind of tree uh, you can even do that as well in here so we're gonna go down a bit here we got branch force and I'm just gonna mess around with the gravity I want it to be a little bit so the branches kind of droop a little bit and then you have other options here I'm just gonna leave that now this is where we can play around with where our branches are on the tree so obviously we don't want them too close to the base right we might want them a little bit higher so i'm gonna mess around with this position minimum and just bring them up a little bit because another thing we got to take into account is if you're making this for a game you want to make sure that your player's not running and his head is touching or her head is touching the leaves at the top right so we want to make sure that this is high enough and I think 50 is going to be okay so I'm going to just leave it there and I think we're pretty much done with the uh, branches we're going to go ahead and move on to the leaves now and then from there we can go ahead and start bringing this out and then hopefully into Unreal Engine soon so let's go ahead and jump to the leaves here the leaves we already have a empty leaf group here so i'm just going to talk a little bit about this real quick and then we'll jump into making it so the reason why there's different leaf groups is because let's say you don't have one type of leaf texture right you have multiple in this case you can have uh, a leaf texture that's just all leaves and then there's one that maybe has branches on them and you might want to mix them around here and there this is where you would do that you can just click add leaf and it's going to add another group and then you can modify them separately and spread them around your tree however you want so that's just a little idea there feel free to play around with it but we're just going to go with this empty group here and we're going to go ahead and just go down here we'll do double sided and for the cross section either front or cross front is good so we'll just leave it at front and then here leaf count is where we start adding the leaves in so we want to be careful because poly count at at this point i'm not going to care about the poly count i'm just going to make whatever tree i feel is cool um this isn't going to be for a game it's just it might be for a project or if i need a filler tree i'll have something later and this is just for the tutorial so you guys can learn so don't worry about poly count that's something that you can worry about later um a lot of people get caught up in poly count and what happens is they don't make the asset that they want and they feel bad after go don't worry about poly count just go with whatever you have and later whatever needs to be adjusted you can figure out hey this model needs to be adjusted more so keep that in mind but let's uh start adding some textures to this leaf so we have front double-sided here you can mess around with these like you can get diamond shaped um, how whatever you want to do or poly quad there's different ones here if you want it like a sort of cone shape I think World of Warcraft uses this sort of style maybe um, their textures 
for their leaves are not flat like this they use a kind of triangular shape which is kind of interesting um it's just something that i learned from another artist and um we'll go ahead and just leave it like this we don't need to mess around with stuff here so we'll just leave that for now what we want to do is we want to have a leaf texture so i'm going to show you how to make this I kind of did in my breakdown, but in this video, we're going to make a whole brand new one. This time, we're going to make one that is a little bit more full and richer. So that way, the tree actually looks like it's full of leaves versus where I kind of spread them out a little bit. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to use GIMP since it's a free software. Some people might not have Photoshop or I use Affinity Photo. So we're just going to use free software here. So let's jump into GIMP, then we can start making the leaf textures. All right, so here in GIMP, what we're going to go ahead and do is go to File, New, and we want to set it to 2048 by 2048. If you're on a budget, you can go 1024 by 1024. I'm going to go under Advanced, and we want to make sure that the fill width is set to transparency, so our background is transparent. We can leave everything else the same. Remember, we want 8-bit integer. And there we go. Now that we have our transparent background, I'm going to create a new layer here by right-clicking and then new layer. And we'll call it leaf shape. It's already there for me. So now what we're going to do is select the path tools here, or the paths tool. And with this layer selected, we're going to start making our leaf shape. So the thing with stylized leaves is that you don't need to do too much detail on them. They can just be clear. And I think that's the best way to do it because then you can color them. It looks a little bit more colorful and nice that way. And it's less of a headache because, I mean, you could add details to your leaves, but unless someone's going to be super close to it, it's not going to matter much. So, and for us environment artists who are just showing off our work and stuff a lot of times uh, some of the trees and things are, are a bit far away or in the background so that's why I think these leaves work pretty good and they can be used universally so what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll a little bit in and I'm gonna left click here to start the paths tool and we're gonna make a sort of shape here so I have it so uh, place there I'm gonna place one here then I'm gonna go down to maybe about here you're gonna have to kind of eyeball this a little bit so I'm gonna click here a little bit down here and then just try to follow what I'm doing and then we're gonna use this grid to kind of see and line up where exactly uh, this point might be at so they're kind of even and then to close this off, I'm going to hold control and then left click on this point. That's going to close everything off. So now what we want to do is we want to start making this more like a leaf, right? Right now it looks kind of like a diamond. This part is like the little stem part of the leaf where it's kind of connected to the actual um, stem or branch or whatever. Um, so what we want to do is we want to select this by left clicking on it. We're going to hold control and then left click and drag up. So as you can see, this is rounding off that top uh, part. And then if I hold shift and go a little bit more up, it's going to do it to the bottom as well. So left click here, hold control first click and drag up while holding control then hold shift and then we're gonna bring it up as well like that and we'll go maybe for something like that now I'm gonna left click here and I'm just gonna drag this a little bit more in so that it kind of is about the same um, for this side and this side so don't don't feel bad if it doesn't look the same you just kind of want some type of leaf shape and then later you can 
mess around with these points to make it a little bit more better. Just be careful you don't click off. Um, some With this tool you can easily mess up. So, And then what we're going to do is we're going to, once we have everything set up that we like, we're going to go over here on the side here. I'm under this uh, tab here. And there should be a selection from path. We're going to click on that. So what it's going to do is it's going to make a selection based off of the path we made. And then what we want to do is we want to get the bucket fill tool. If you right click here, you can change to gradient and so on. But we're going to click on the bucket tool. Make sure white is the first color. And then we're still under leaf shape. We're going to click on here to make that leaf shape. So once we have that, we're pretty much set. We're just going to copy this around and make our leaf texture. Now that we have this selected, um, I'm just going to go to select and then do none. And I'm just going to go out a bit. So now we have our leaf. I'm going to click on the move tool here. And... I'm going to right click on this layer and I'm going to duplicate it. So now because we have the move tool, we can start moving it around. And as you can see, now we have two. So what we want to do is we want to use the rotation tool and scale tool. If I right click under this specific tool here, we can choose different ones. So for right now, I'm going to leave it on rotation. We just want to rotate this a little bit and then hit rotate then we're gonna go ahead and position this like so and what we can do also is um, I would just keep them separate but you can if you wanted to you can combine them I'm just gonna do them one by one also keep in mind that um, each copy is gonna take up some space so be careful with that I highly recommend saving in between and also um, just going back to tree it real quick make sure I should have mentioned this before make sure you save this like save it somewhere on you're not gonna be able to save it under your hard drive or at least under the tree it folder so what I do is I make a folder in documents I call it tree it custom trees and then here you can have like the various trees so I'm just going to call this, um, I'm just call it fantasy tree for right now. I don't know what to name it. So I'm just going to call it that. And then we're just going to save it. So that way we have this .tre file so we can open it in tree in case we need to. Anyways, let's jump back to GIMP real quick and we're going to just continue our process here of duplicating. So this process is pretty much self-explanatory. I don't, I feel like I don't have to explain too much, but I'll just show you real quick. I'm just going to duplicate. I have the move tool. I'm going to move this one over. I'm going to rotate it and we can mess with this here to rotate it. And then go back to the move tool and just adjust it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to make the leaves too big or too small. If you do, do not make your leaves too big. I feel like this size should be good enough. Um, I am going to scale it down. So in order to go to the scale tool, I'm just going to show you on this real quick. You're going to right click here. Go to scale. Then you click on here and you can just uh, left mouse click these arrows here. Or if you scroll out a bit, there's these handles on the boxes and you can make the leaves smaller and so on. So let's say I make it smaller, do OK, then I get the move tool. I'm holding control and middle mouse button, like scrolling to zoom in and out. And then we can place that maybe right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just speed up the video so that way I can get this done and then you can try and follow along or just do whatever you feel is good for a leaf texture and then we'll jump right back and save it out and then we'll go into tree it again.
this is what I'm gonna go with for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I save this. So I'm gonna go to file, save as, and um, I think I'm just gonna save it under the tree it folder that I made under my documents. Just trying to find it right now. And here it is. And then I'm just going to make a new folder here and just call it leaves texture file. And then under here, we'll just call this leaves texture mask 01. And then we wanted to save it as that for GIMP. And then we'll go ahead and save this. So after we save it, we should be good. We can see the name up here to make sure that it's saved. And then we just want to make sure that that's good. It's going to take a little while because this is a lot of duplicates. And then now what we could do is merge everything down, but we might not have to. We can just export this out as a PNG. So we're going to go to export and then we can just leave it as it is and we can save it in here um, let's just make a textures folder and then in that folder we'll we'll go ahead and put this PNG in there so we'll just have to remember that we want to put it there and we're just gonna leave everything the same I'm not gonna mess with the settings so now if I go to um, that folder Go to documents, tree it, and then I'm just going to drag the window over. Here it is. So this is what we want our texture to look like. Mine's going to look like this. So it's a little bit more full compared to the other leaf textures that I've done. And um, now what we're going to do is jump back into tree it and we're going to go ahead and apply this and start messing around with the leaves so we can get that done. All right, so we're back in tree it. Now, um, under the leaf, if we go and scroll a little bit down, you'll find leaf texture. We're gonna load in our texture here, just the a uh, base diffuse texture. So I'm gonna go and locate it. We're already under documents, so that's good because it's gonna make it easier for me to find it. And then here's our texture. We're gonna open it up and put okay. So now we have our leaves on our tree. Now don't worry if they look a little bit weird, like they have outlines and stuff. That's totally fine. Once we um, bring it to Unreal Engine, we can go ahead and modify that. And if we want to add a little bit of a color to this to make it a bit more visually appealing, we can click on there and then just change the color here. So maybe we'll go for a little bit of a darker green. And that's that's all right for right now. It, it kind of looks like a tree. Now, don't worry. This is not how it's going to look in Unreal Engine. This is just what we got here. This is a totally different rendering engine here. And it's just to help us make trees. So if we go around and look at this, we can see how it's going to look. And maybe we don't want too many branches exposed now there's a it, it's kind of debatable but i feel like it's good to have branches exposed like this because the thing is you don't want to just see a bunch of a cloud of leaves right and i know on some trees it, it can feel like that and maybe that's what you're going for but i think these branches they break it up to make it feel like it's actually a tree you know and you can see them versus someone just assuming that you just put a bunch of leaves there and who knows if there's branches under there or not so it's completely debatable we'll kind of do a half and half here we'll try and make this as full as possible but with some areas exposed like i feel like this area is a little too exposed but we can modify the position of the branches and just make this fill a little bit more full and then we might even mess with the size of the leaves a little bit. You can make your leaves smaller or bigger. It totally depends on what you want to do. And um, 
so far this is looking all right but we need to make some adjustments so we're under the leaf section already let's start messing with like different values here so we'll up the leaf length a little bit to make it a little bit more bigger as you can see just by the default it was too small but when we make it a little bit bigger it'll spread that out more and cover some areas we want to mess with the rotation of the leaves right now the leaves are just kind of all stacked on top of each other so we want to try and maybe make it so it's a bit spread out now i'm just going to mess with some other values here so like crinkliness can help with that a little bit so we'll do that and then we'll go more down until we get to I believe it's leaf gravity here yeah so here we can kind of adjust the leaves so I think zero is what it was at by default so we can make them go up or down a bit maybe I'll go with that and then what we want is to maybe cover some areas so this area looks like it's covered from this side this side is a little bit of exposed right here so we'll see what we can do there we could go ahead and add other brand uh, branches that's gonna make us have a bit more of a fuller tree so I'm gonna go under branch and then I'm gonna scroll all the way up and we'll add a few other ones so our poly count is gonna go up when we do this but we're gonna have more branches now which means the tree is gonna be or look a lot more full now the thing is all these branches are like cluttered everywhere and they might be in a good position but they we can use some of these branches to cover certain areas right so let's go ahead and utilize that so we're gonna go to tree here and let's just save this real quick we're gonna go and scroll down to edit joints and now we can edit the tree we don't want to touch the trunk we just want to select the uh, the branches here and modify them so the way I'm moving around is you can scroll in and out and then right mouse button is to pan and then holding shift we can move around so I'm gonna select this one here and what I'm gonna do is this bottom this is the origin point for that branch we're gonna click on it and now we have these new arrows that pop up this is how we're gonna move this branch so we have the yaw yaw is rotation from left to right pitch is rotation up and down and then of course the length is if we want to extend or retract it so what we want to do is mess with the yaw and I'm going to rotate that around to about here and then we're gonna mess with the pitch and bring it a little bit more down and as you can see we can kind of cover this area a little bit so now that area might not be exposed this area kind of is so maybe we want to move it a little bit over like that And I think that's good again like I said you want to have some areas exposed like right here I think is too exposed so we're gonna need to cover that area now we want to be careful with what branches we are selecting because we don't want to like close off another area and then another area is exposed so I'm gonna select this branch rotate it a little bit over here and we'll check it out I'm not too worried about that that's fine we'll bring it to there and then I'm going to mess with the pitch to bring it down a little bit and I think that that is good 
So we could add more branches and make this more full, but I think that I like what we have so far. I might mess around with uh, some of these branches here. So collect, uh, select that one. And I want to rotate this a little bit over here. Just so we can get this area a little covered. And that's fine. So with what we have right now, I think this tree is fairly good. And I think we can now move on to the next step, which is going to be uh, bringing it into Unreal Engine. And then we're going to be able to... We're going to be able to make it stylized and look more nicer. So once we're done, we'll just hit Edit Joints and... There's one last thing we have to do for the leaves. We go under leaf. Let's just save again. Always important. We're going to scroll up a bit. And there's an option here that I forgot to mess with. And that's this leaf smoothing mode. It's on surface right now. We want to change it to tree. And as you can see, the shading changes. Now, what this does is it's the equivalent, I believe, of what we would do in blender i think i show this in my breakdown but i brought it in blender and did a data transfer for a uv sphere to get that shading here i believe it does somewhat of the same thing it'll change the shading so it's smoother and here we can mess with the smoothing of that as well so after we've done that i think we should be good you can go ahead and mess around with this more but I think I'm going to just go with this. And again, we can always come back to the tree and modify it. But I feel like this is a good start. So let's go and file and save one more time. And then we're going to go ahead and export this out. Now, we could do FBX. I think there was an issue doing this last time. And uh, the thing is, we need to bring it into Blender because we got to make sure smoothing groups are set for Unreal Engine or else it's going to be picky. So I'm just going to do Wavefront OBJ. And then we already have Fantasy Tree here. So I'm just going to save it there and we're going to call it Fantasy Tree Large. And we don't really need to put that because we already have the extension. I'll just put Fin just to make this separate because we are going to maybe export it out as an FBX. So I'm gonna save that. And now what we're gonna do is we'll jump into Blender real quick, get that stuff done so we can bring it over to Unrunge. All right, so here we are in Blender. Let's go ahead and import the tree we just made. I'm gonna go to File Import and then we're gonna do OBJ, Wavefront here. We're gonna locate our tree that we saved. And here it is. We want to make sure we're selecting the OBJ, not the MLT or whatever it's called. That's the material. And then we're going to bring it in. So it might be too big. And another thing is it's one mesh. So we're going to go ahead and scale it down a bit. Because in Unreal Engine, it's just going to be way too big. So we need to scale it to a fairly decent size. If I hit one, this is about a meter. So maybe we'll just do it a little bit above that meter. And I think that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and control A. So control and then I'm pressing A as in Atom. And then we're going to click rotation and scale. What this is going to do is it's going to freeze the transformations here. So if I go back, notice how the scales messed up and the rotation we want to do this because if we don't there's going to be issues with our model and it's going to look weird if we scale it in engine and so on so control a rotation and scale will zero everything out and set our scale back to one so now that we've done that we i think are pretty much set now i'm gonna try something different here usually i just have one tree right because see in Unreal Engine, if we have two separate objects, then it'll 
I, I could be wrong about this, but it two separate objects, it's going to render those objects separate versus together. Whereas if the mesh is together like this, it's one object. It's just going to render one object, but two materials. So we have to, um, we're going to try something different here and we're going to separate the leaves from the tree. Now, this is a good and a bad thing, a good thing because then the leaves are separate and we can keep them uh, just separate from the tree bark. So let's say we don't want shadows on the leaves, but we want it on the tree bark. We can do that um, if they're separate, but if they're together, we're a little bit more restricted, but it's easier to copy it around and move it around. So we're going to just go with a little bit more of a complicated way in Unreal Engine. We can still group them. And move them as one mesh but we're gonna just separate them so in order for us to do that we need to go to the material section here and this is why it was important for us to set the materials in tree it because now they appear here in blender and if i go to edit mode as you can see everything is one mesh i can't just hit a and just select the leaves or it's going to take too long to select everything one by one so the easiest way to do this is to go to the leaf texture here and then do select and now we have all the leaves selected and all the branches and everything else is left alone which is really great it saves us a lot of time so now that we have this selected I'm going to hit P as in Paul and we're gonna get the uh, separation menu popping up and we're gonna do selection because we want to separate what we have selected. Then I'm going to hold tab, go to object mode, and now we have two separate objects. Now, I believe we can export this under one FBX. We're going to try that out. I'm going to just do it two ways. I'm going to export both of these as one, and then I'll do another one as separate. So that way we don't have to go back and forth too much. But real quick, let's name the leaves to leaves. And under here, we're going to do leaves under the objects uh, tab. It's very important. And then this is already good. We can just leave it as tree or we can just name it properly. Uh, this doesn't really feel like a large tree. We'll just call it mid tree 01. And then we'll do leaves mid 01. Cool. So in a game engine, you want to make sure you change it here in the project uh, data names here. But we're not going to really do that here. We're just going to leave it because it's not going to matter too much. So now we're going to go ahead and export this out. So I'm going to select them. And I already have this set up to my shortcuts menu. You can just go to file and export here. But I'm going to just do Q export FBX and then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is save it to where tree it is custom trees we'll save it we'll just save it under here I'm gonna make a new folder and call it finished trees we'll click on that and we'll name this uh, like that do mesh selected objects apply the transformation so we make sure nothing is off and then here's our smoothing groups we want to make sure we set it to face or else Unreal Engine's going to get pissed so now that we did that we'll export it out and then what i'm going to do is export these separate so under the same area we're just going to do underscore leaves and then everything should be set up. And then we're going to export this. And instead of leaves, we're going to put trunk. All right, so now that we have all, everything exported, we're going to jump into Unreal Engine and start working on the shaders because that's going to take a while. I'm sorry, but I feel like this video is probably going to be a little bit long. I wanted to condense it, but there's just so many steps. But I rather 
give you a detailed step breakdown versus something that's rushed and not informative. So anyway, let's jump into Unreal Engine. All right, so here we are in Unreal Engine. In order to save time, I just started Unreal Engine up and I created a new project and got into the file because if you don't do this beforehand, it's going to compile all these shaders and it's just going to take long. So um, it is going to take long if you're starting a new project. I highly recommend if you have an old project around and you want to test this out in there, probably going to save you some more time. But what you want to do is when the Unreal Engine menu thing pops up, you're just going to want to click on game and then you're going to do blank level. Make sure the settings is at maximum. You can do ray tracing if you want to. Desktop mode. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure you have starter content just in case. But we're not going to really need it because this tutorial is just about trees. So if you want to save more time, you can leave that unchecked. And then it's going to compile all the shaders, do all that stuff. It might not take too long with the uh, if you disable the starter content. And then you should end up in the editor menu. And then from there, you're going to probably see the default scene, which is the two chairs and the table. What you want to do is just go to file new level. And then you're going to do basic. And that's pretty much where I'm at now. It's going to give us some of the basics to start with. Now, I'm going to disable post-processing volume. And we'll have a look at that later. That's probably the only thing I think that I added here that's different. And that's going to come into play later because it's going to help make the tree look a little bit more better. So what I did here is I right click in the um, under the test level here. You can create a new folder and I just called the folder trees because that's where we're going to put our tree next. And I already have some stuff set up because I redid this tutorial many times, but we're going to go ahead and do it again. So I'm going to delete this. And we're going to delete this instance real quick. What you want to do is you want to bring in your tree FBX that we saved out from Blender. And once you bring it in, it should have the materials already there it, and bring in your textures. If not, you can just bring them in by dragging and dropping them in. You can right click here, make a material, and then you can have a material for the leaves and a material for the tree bark. Then we have our models here. I added in the separate version that we exported. So we exported a version that's all combined and then one that's separate because we're going to try something out with the separate version. So once we do that and we have everything here, we can start messing with the material. So I'm going to show you what I did for the tree bark and then we're going to create an instance of it. So for the tree bark, all I did was... Um, I added a constant vector one here to zero out the metallic and specular so it's not shiny. That'll get rid of the shininess. And then I add another one with a value of one to the roughness. To get this, you're just going to hit, hit or hold one on your keyboard and then left click. And then you'll have it there. You can also right click search. And then if you do constant, it's this first one right here. So once you add that in, we can go ahead and start plugging those in. Then what I do here is I add a vector three, so you can do hold three and left click. That'll bring this in. And if you right click it and do convert to parameter, you can name it whatever you want. In this case, I already have one called color brightness because we're gonna want something to brighten up our texture if it's dark. Now, if your texture is too light and you wanna darken it, then maybe instead of a blend overlay, you wanna try a multiply. So if you right click, you can do multiply and then you just plug it in. And then after that, the blend overlay, I'm just gonna do blend over, or just type in blend and it should be one of these here. Usually it'll just pop up. But anyways, if you just type in overlay, there it is. Overlay is probably a better choice to type and then it's just gonna bring that out. So the base texture is going to go to the base and then the blend is going to be the brightness color from our vector three. If you go to the default value here, just crank this up and it'll be full white. So that means the texture will be lit up. After that, we're just going to hit save. 
and that's going to be it for the tree uh, texture or the bark texture. We don't need to mess with anything here because there's nothing really special. We're not doing any two side or anything. It's just a regular surface shader. So once that's set up, we're going to right click and then do create material instance. And now we have the instance of that. And we're going to uh, click and shift click these two so we can drag them both in the leaves and the tree trunk. We'll put it right here for now. And what I'm going to do is change them both to movable. So that way we're not baking any static light maps or anything like that. It's just going to be uh, dynamic as it says here. So after we do that, we're going to group these, but we're not going to do them right now. Instead, I'm going to left click here and then shift left click the top one. So we have both of them selected. I'm going to click and drag it into our trees folder. So now they are part of that folder and they're separate from everything else. Let's go back to the uh, material here. And now we're going to start modifying the leaf material so that we can change it up because right now it looks ugly and before I create a material instance I'm gonna modify the master material so this is where things are gonna get quite interesting and long because the leaf texture is where we're gonna make this tree feel a lot more stylized so I'm just right clicking to pan around I'm gonna move this back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the alpha channel right here and plug that into the opacity mass. It's grayed out right now, but don't worry. We're going to change that. We're going to click on the material node here, the material master node. We're going to change from opaque to mast. And for the moment, we'll leave it as default lit. But I'm going to do two-sided because that's going to make our tree feel a little bit more full. And I'll show it with and without so we can see the differences. And then I believe that's it. You can have this on or off. Doesn't matter. I think I'm just going to turn it off. And I think that's all we have to do for the moment. So I'm going to take this off. And right now we should have just something like that. So what's what it's gonna do now if i save it and we look at the tree it has the leaves but everything's dark so we need to start adding the colors and things to it so what we're gonna do right now is we are going to start creating the base color first and then we're going to create the other things but the easiest thing to do right now is the normal so for the normal what we're going to do is we're going to create a node called normal WS vertex normal WS right here should look like this you want to bring this in then we want to right click here and search for two sided sign want to bring that in as well and then what we want to do is add I believe it is a multiply I'm going to have to double check that real quick. All right. So what we're going to do for the normal is I do have that here somewhere as well. We're going to have a multiply there. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to add a transform node. Sorry, just forgetting some of the stuff. And then what we're going to do is click on this. We're going to do a world space to tangent space and then if we click on this we're going to plug that into there this is going to get plugged into b and then our two-sided sign is going to get plugged into a then we're going to plug that into the normal and we're not going to see much change yet but we'll i'll show you two different methods of how we can do this so for right now we're just going to go with that all right, now let's get to the color part. So for the color, we're going to start doing a few different things here. So we're going to start off with a color. And if I hold three down and left click, we're going to bring out a vector three node. 
and we want to convert this to a parameter so I'm going to right click convert to parameter and I'm going to call this um, diffuse color this is going to be the main color for the leaves and we're going to do some changes and things around so keep in mind uh, this shader is a little bit different from the ones that I used in my project. In my project, I had my own shader there. But this one's a little bit more complicated. And it is by the YouTuber Victoria. So I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can check it out. And you can see her, her video tutorial. She kind of covers this as well. So I'm going to be using the shader that she has so that we can create the leaves here because I think it gives you a little bit more control over certain things and um, it's quite interesting. So let's start building this out with the color here. We're gonna go ahead and just choose a maybe darker green color for right now. We'll, we'll be messing around with this a lot here and there. So I'm gonna bring it a little bit back because we're going to have to make a bunch of nodes right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a few things before as well. So we're going to add another one of the Vertex Normal WS nodes. I'm going to uh, control C to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click drag this out and we want to add a node called breakout float three components. And once we have that, we're going to take the blue channel here and we're going to plug it into an add. So I'm going to click drag out and do add. Now once we have add, we're going to add some scalar parameters. These are going to be things we can modify and i'll explain a little bit later on what they do i think victoria does a really good job at explaining it and i'll do my best to explain it as well so i'm going to hit s i'm going to hold that down and left click and that's going to add our vector one constant parameter this time we can just jump in and type the name so for this we're just going to call it norm power or we can even call it norm intensity I think is a better is a better term this is gonna control the normal intensity of what we're gonna be doing here so I'm gonna plug that into B then what we're gonna do is take this and add it to a multiply and for the multiply we're gonna add a constant 1 so just hold one left click and then we're going to put that into B and this is going to be 0.5 as the value. The default, we're going to go ahead and drag this out and we're going to add a power node. And then what we're going to do from there is we are going to add another scalar parameter. So hold S left click and this is going to be called norm softness. We'll explain what everything is later, but just create these and then plug that into the exponent section for this node. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag this out one more time and do one minus node. And then we're going to make a lerp here. So if I hold L and left click, we can add the lerp node. And then we're going to plug this section into the alpha. Now we're going to build the rest of this, which isn't going to take too long. Just hold S, left click. We're going to add a color that's going to be for the underneath of the tree. So we'll just call it under color. We're going to drag out from here and we're going to add a multiply node. This is going to be plugged into B. We're going to add another node here, call it hue shift. This is going to change the color of the bottom color that we decide to choose. And in order for us to do that stuff, 
we're going to need to click and drag this out and we're going to type in hue shift and there it is the multiply is going to get plugged into the texture portion on the bottom this is going to get plugged into b and then we're going to take this uh this connection for the texture or the color and plug it into a and after that we're done that's it that's all we're doing for the base color we're going to click and drag this into the base color and we're set up so now uh we're just gonna clear out some of the shininess so again we'll just add a constant one and we'll put that for there add another one and then I'm just going to set this to a value of 1. And we're going to put that for the roughness. So now, no more shininess. That's good. Let's save it. And just at this point in the project, just save the whole project. That way, in case anything goes on, it crashes. You have everything saved. Alright, so now we're going to go on to building um the emissive color and then we'll build off the last thing which is adding wind and movement to the leaves so we're done with color let's go ahead and move on to the emission portion so i'm just going to bring that reference that i have up here as well the reason why i have the references is because it it's going to be hard to rem you know remember all this so um it's better to do screenshots of old shaders or you can even uh, copy those old shaders into your other files and that way you don't have to you know recreate everything over again so for the emission portion we're gonna step a little bit back here I'm gonna hold s and left click we're gonna add our first parameter here and we're gonna call it subsurface underscore radius and this is going to be for um just an emissive color that's going to shroud over the tree that we can add a little brightness to the tree this is going to control that radius and what we're going to do is plug that into a fresnel so if we type that out here's the node we're going to take that plug it into a saturate and let's just drag these a little bit back let's take the saturate node and we're going to plug it into a multiply and now we're going to add another color here so we're going to hold down three left click right click this convert to parameter and we're going to call this subsurface tint and then i'm going to plug that into the b for the moment, we'll change this uh, value to something like a green, some lighter type of green, something like that. We'll mess around with it later. Alright, and then we're going to take this multiply, add it to one more multiply node. And we're just going to have one more parameter. If I hold S, left click. And this is going to be called subsurface intensity. And this is going to be how intense the subsurface scattering is for the uh, the leaves. And then we're going to click and drag that into emissive. And there we go. So there is like a subsurface color you can add. That's what I kind of did for my uh, leaves. But we might not need it here. So we're just going to go with what we have and let's see everything's plugged in so that should be it for the emission we'll go ahead and save that and it's gonna do its thing all right cool we're gonna go ahead and work on the world offset position so that we can make the leaves start to move we're gonna go ahead and start working on the uh, world position offset so we're gonna make the leaves move and all that stuff and we're going to be able to modify them hopefully so that we can scale them up as well so that's going to be another nice plus because then we can modify the uh size of the leaves if we have to so let's start building this because this is going to take quite some time we're going to go ahead and 
I'm just gonna have to see my reference here because this is quite a big um, set of nodes that we have to build so just uh, stay with me and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a texture coordinate node so it should look something like that you can just leave it as it is we're gonna take that and plug that into a one minus node so if you just type one minus or just minus it'll bring that node up then we're gonna want to click and drag at a multiply node then we're going to add a scalar parameter here let's set the value to 2 we're gonna plug that into the multiply then we're going to add a subtract node, add another scalar parameter here, and we're going to set this to a value of 1. Alright, and then once we do that, we're going to drag out, add another multiply. Here we're going to add a constant vector 2 node, so in this case we're going to hold 2 and then left click. That's going to add that. We're going to do minus 1 and then one and then we're gonna take that plug it into the B of that multiply then we are going to drag out here and add a append node append vector we're gonna add another constant set the value to zero and then we're gonna plug this into a transform node transform vector so once you get that we're gonna go to we're gonna change this from camera space to local space and then we're going to add a normalized node from there we're going to add a multiply so just follow everything that i'm doing if i'm going too fast um, you can always slow the video down or pause it we're going to add another scalar parameter, set that to 1. And then we're going to just control C to copy that, control V to paste it here. We're going to change this from local space to world space. Plug that into there. Now we're going to start building the other uh, chain here. So we're going to just copy this vertex normal WS, put it here. I'm going to hold S and left click to add a scalar parameter. We're going to call it billboard inflate. All right. So after we do that, we're going to go ahead and drag this out into a multiply. Plug that into B. Put this into an add node. And then we're going to take this guy and plug him into B. One more multiply node. And then another scalar parameter. We're going to call this billboard underscore scale. And then that's going to be plugged into the B. And now we're going to add a few other scalar parameters, but all we're going to add now is simple grass wind. So if I hit S, left click, the first parameter is going to be called wind intensity. We'll copy and paste, then we're going to change the name here. This one is going to be wind weight. Let me see, did I even name it? I don't know what happened, but let me go ahead and paste that again. Let me make sure there's no duplicates here. I didn't do anything. I thought I was typing it out, but I guess not. So, wind, wait. Copy it, paste it again. And then we're going to change this to wind speed so the speed is going to be plugged into there the weight into this one and then the intensity into the top now this is going to vary on what you want to do i just have this set to one the weight is set to 0.5 and the speed is set to 0.5 as well 
and then this will get plugged into the additional WPO. And once we have all that set up, we'll talk a little bit about what everything does right now. We're going to just drag this and put it into the world position offset. So once we do that, we'll go ahead and hit save. It's going to do all the shader compilation stuff. And then we're good. Now before we start going and messing around with the shader, the shader is now finally complete. That's all we have to do for the leaf shader and we'll start messing around with the parameters. So here, there's not really too much to talk about. It's This is some sort of algorithm to basically, what it's doing is it's taking the, um, it's gonna take the texture coordinates of whatever it is to do with this portion here honestly i'm not too sure about the uh about all this it's something to do with the normals and all that stuff but i do know the billboard stuff is going to change the size of, of the leaves and all that stuff so in a way it's going to affect that in some way but grass wind all it does is it's going to move the leaves here in this case and give us movement as you can see here so we already have that saved let me just close that off and there we go so we have our leaves now and everything should be set up but now it kind of looks like one of those trees that basically it's just there's it looks like a basic tree right we got to modify some settings in order for us to make it look better so now that we've got the leaf shader completed we can right click it and create the material instance what i want to do is drag this onto there so now we have the material instance and we can modify this so i'm going to move this to the side so we can see we don't need to worry about here we're going to just look at it here so let's talk about all this stuff we'll talk about this stuff first and then we'll go down so billboard stuff inflate and scale if we mess with this it should increase the size of our leaves the scale and everything now i haven't gotten this to work it, it looks like it kind of is working yeah so it is working we just gotta mess with the values but I'm just going to leave this. I'm not really going to mess around with it. Now we got hue shift and all this other stuff. So we're going to just check all three of these. So hue shift is going to change the bottom color. Now we don't have anything yet because we got to mess with these two. So let's do normal intensity. We'll crank that up a little bit and then we'll do normal softness. And this is supposed to affect the normal, so we might not be able to see it much there. Yeah, so now we can kind of see it on this side. It's just there's too much light on that side. But as you can see, we can control the shading a little bit. Then we have the subsurface stuff. This is for the intensity and radius, and then we have the tint. So the tint is at a green right now. Um, let's say we make it this sort of blue color. And then if we add intensity, you can kind of see what it's going to do. It's going to add a little bit to the uh, tree and then we can mess with the radius. We can either have it all over the tree or in just some parts. This is just going to give the tree a little bit more variation. So maybe we don't want it too much. We can darken it a little bit. Then we have the under color. This is going to be the color that is from the bottom here. So if I start cranking this up, you can kind of see what we get. And this is based off of the hue shift. So these two go together. As you can see, we can change some values and stuff around. So if we modify this under color, we can have just a little bit of it.
and you can pretty much just mess around with this until we get something that we like I'm not really digging maybe this color for the leaves I'm gonna make them feel a little bit more darker I feel like darker leaves are a little bit more nicer to look at and I think it's gonna make this stuff pop a little more so then we can do this And then we have the radius. Maybe we don't want too much of it. So we can go ahead and do that. Now, from a distance, the tree looks pretty nice, right? Of course, when you start to get closer, you're going to see more of the, the details of the leaves. And honestly, we can do a much better job with the leaves, like their placement. That can sometimes help. But for now, I think this is a pretty cool option. There's some other things we can do that I'm going to show you in just a second. But this is pretty much the shader. And the trees that I use, they're pretty much similar. I just use a different color versus here maybe if we want to we can mess around with uh, subsurface scattering so the thing with this shader right now is that it we'll drag this out real quick it's default lit so originally the tree that I have I set it to two-sided foliage and we can just save it and see what that does right now. So it may be something we might want or might not. Again, it doesn't really affect too much. And this is pretty much what I had. And what's good about this is we get subsurface color here. Which means we can get another... Um, we can change the color of the subsurface so what I did is I copied this vector 3 here I have to change the name or else it's going to change the color of that other one the other uh, base color so I'm just going to call this sub color for right now and it's already a parameter so I'm going to drag this off hopefully we don't have to make a new material instance I'm going to plug that into the subsurface color and do save and we'll see if we can mess around with this a little bit maybe it can help out in some cases so I'm gonna close this off we're gonna go to our material instance and then we should have the sub color here and then if we mess around with this as you can see we can further manipulate the uh, tree here if I don't have it it looks like that if I do have it you can kind of see the difference here so we can make it lighter or darker again just mess around with this a bit you know you can do quite a lot you can add a little bit of warm colors if you want to And it kind of just adds a little bit to the uh, the tree. So I think this pretty much covers the end of the tutorial. So if I want to, let's say this is not what you want, right? Maybe you want to go for a little bit more of a softer style of leaves. This might be too much. The reason why we have the leaves separate is because both of these cast shadows. And... Shadows are nice, right? But if we turn off cast shadows for the leaves, you can see we get a much softer look. And if we go away, you can kind of see that. So this may be something you might want or might not. Again, you're going to start seeing the shadow of just this only, and that might not be exactly what you want. So might have to turn shadows off for everything. 
but i think with shadows it's still pretty cool and interesting you can probably still mess around with this stuff a little bit more now in terms of getting softer shadows if you want to do that you can go to your directional light and under directional light there is a parameter called source angle and source soft angle if i increase this notice the shadows here let's go a little bit closer see how they're sharp if i increase it it blurs the shadow out and then we have the source angle that we can mess with so if you want much more softer shadows or harder shadows that outline things you can do that now let's make this tree look a little bit more better now there is a parameter to brighten the shadows here we'll eventually have to find it because i'll be honest i completely forgot it's in my other project and i'll have to like dig through some of that stuff i might have it in notes somewhere but we're gonna make this tree look a little bit more better so i'm going to turn on post processing and i'm going to just turn off everything from here everything that i modified i'm just going to turn off so we global illumination you can just turn that on and what we want to do is in order to add a post processing volume you're going to go up here and then go to volumes and then under here you should find post processing you're going to click on that it's going to be placed into the world and then what you want to do is select it go down until you find this infinite extend unbound you want to check that it's going to be under post process volume settings and that is going to allow this to affect the whole scene once you do that we're going to go ahead and add in a little bit of bloom here so under bloom i'm going to do method intensity threshold and you can modify this if you want a little bit of a softer look to the tree you can increase the bloom a bit try not to overdo this because sometimes games they overdo the bloom and it's just too much and then you can mess around with this i just want full bloom so we'll leave it and then if we go to color grading um we have a lot of options here as well if we go under uh, some of these things here like the shadows and stuff we can mess around with things like the gamma maybe if i up the value yeah so if i up the value here as you can see the shadows are going to increase from here and i can also uh change the color of it a little bit to make it to make it either darker or lighter let's see here so yeah this is kind of one way there is another way to mess with it might not want to do gamma we can try um these other ones yeah maybe this is a little bit better so we can add a little bit of a bluish color to there kind of soften the shadows a little bit more so this is without and with so you can mess around i believe the setting that i was talking to you guys about is probably somewhere under here but anyways we're gonna keep on going we'll check for the mids and this is going to change the overall mood now i like to because the scene is just normal and there's a lot of blue and cool colors i like to add a little bit of warmth to the scene so somewhere like here you can mess with the value a little bit so this is without and this is with as you can see it kind of helps to add a little bit of mood to the scene and this is going to depend on what you want to do and then we can add more things to make stuff either more clear or not so i think i'm just going to leave it at that then we have highlights not sure if i'm going to mess with this 
it's not really going to do too much. So yeah, just going to turn that off. And you can go ahead and just mess with whatever whatever settings you want. It's good to explore and see what you can do. Now there's uh, skylight in here. I changed the intensity. The more intense this is, it is going to make things brighter, but it's also going to brighten your shadows as well. I'm going to turn off cast shadows here. And just to show you, if I set this to 10, it's going to brighten some of the areas. But I'm just going to set it back to maybe 5. And if we go down here, we can mess with some stuff. There's indirect lighting intensity and all that. Can mess around with that. Recapture. Didn't really do too much. If we go back to our directional light, since this has a lot of influence over the lighting of the scene, we can go to the indirect lighting intensity here and stuff, and we can mess with this. And yeah, notice the change here for the shadows. So this is without it, right? It's dark. Now let's increase the indirect lighting intensity. And as you can see, our shadows start to brighten up. And maybe we don't want too much. want it a little bit dark. And I think that's good. Add a little bit of sunlight here. A little bit of a different color to the sun. So, I think that should be it. We're just going to stop here and go with that. I think this tree looks pretty good. And this is just one way to go about making a stylized tree. If you mess around with those settings, you can get whatever type of tree that you want. If you want, you can try the UV sphere method as well. Maybe that'll give you a little bit better shading. But the shader is set up the way it is. And basically, you can reuse it in all your projects. So I'm just going to select these two. I'm going to copy them and then paste them and bring it to the side. It will rotate it around a little bit. Then I'm going to copy it again, paste it, move it up here. I'm going to make sure that I don't have um, snapping for scaling. I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. Rotate it. And then we'll turn off rotation snapping. And for a scene, this is what I did with my scene. Of course, it's not going to look good if it's in a game. You would probably have to modify this and connect the trunk to this part of the tree but you can start making other trees all right so this is going to be a huge cut because i did come back to this and i didn't want to leave you with just a result that was okay i wanted to leave you with something a little bit more better so i'm going to go ahead and explain what i did here so these all these trees are the same tree all I did was duplicate it and you can move it on top, move it around. As you can see, I just rotated these trees and placed them on top of this one and made them smaller. That's it. And you can make new trees this way. Now this is only for a visual presentation. If you're making a video game, you're going to want to modify these trees and try and connect them so that they do feel connected. Because if the player is walking through and they look from the bottom, they're going to see that there's some weirdness here that the trunk is just like sticking out from the shorter part over here. It's not going to make sense. So this is just for a visual presentation. But let's go ahead and talk about how I improved these uh, trees. So everything is the same. It's just we messed around with a lot of the settings and things. Uh, one thing that I did mess around with, um, we, we still have our bloom the same. So... I'm just going to go through this real quick so you can have a look here. We didn't do any other things other than just that. And then our color grading, we do have some changes to the shadows here. 
so very subtle changes nothing too big and same thing for the mid-tones we just have that warmer color as you can see if I turn it off everything's just gonna look very blue but with a bit of warmth we can kind of make the scene come alive and that's what mid-tones does you can start dragging this toward the warmer color and I think that's pretty much it for the post processing now you can mess around with some other stuff I believe these skylight and everything's the same I, I talked about all the settings for all that so all I did to make these trees look a lot better is I just modified the shader itself now if you want to copy my settings here they are so these are all the values that I used again we have the same exact parameters here there's nothing different but if you mess around with the colors enough it's going to give you a much better result and that's why I said you just gotta play around with it more and you can get something that looks really good now here is the value here you can copy this and then you can paste it in you can pause the video for that and same here and then this is the sub color it's just pretty much black we don't have a sub color we just it's very slight so it's not that much but if you want you can mess around with the sub color maybe you can make something a little more interesting well, that's all it is for the leaves there's nothing different about the trunk uh, texture or anything like that so and then uh, one last thing is just make sure that you have soft shadows with the source angle and all that and I did modify it to make these shadows more lighter which is under the indirect intensity and volumetric scattering intensity so make sure that you mess around with that a little bit you can mess around with some of the settings here but yeah that's all I did I just wanted to make mention of that if you play around and put those settings you should get something like this again this is my settings for the directional light and for the direction it's pointing at it's kind of hard to tell but right here you have the rotation values as well again just mess around with it and you can pretty much have good lighting and that's basically it now this is just for me this is just very basic lighting and stuff it's not even fully done just we have a lot of capabilities here to make this look more better but this is just a demonstration a showcase and that's pretty much it just want to thank you all so much for watching the tutorial i hope it was helpful in some way and hopefully you can get on to making stylized trees you can use all these techniques on a variety of different trees and again i'm going to leave uh i believe her name is victoria's a YouTube channel in the description. I highly recommend checking it out because she has a lot of um, different types of trees and tutorials how to do all that stuff. Again, it's just going to be the same shaders and things like that. So again, thank you so much for checking out my Sacred Meadows breakdown video. And if you haven't, I'm going to have that at the end of the video in just a bit where you can check it out and there I cover a lot of different things how to make different things in a summarized way and um, I believe in this tutorial I went a little bit more in depth with the trees but yeah other than that if you would like consider subscribing if you're new to the channel I try to post as much as I can I don't really have a consistent schedule but I do my best to keep you updated with content and definitely leave a like down below and a comment it really will just help me out to know that people are interested and just to put out more content like this so once again thank you so much and have a great day